it's time for Growing Hope, the show determined to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. Because you are extraordinary! And now, live from a little cabin in the woods, nestled along Big Spring Creek, it's your host, Catherine Lang. Hello there, welcome to Growing Hope. I am Catherine Lang, your Hope Smith extraordinaire, here to share hope with a dash of twisted encouragement because it's just more interesting with a few snarky rainbows thrown in. Um, I am on this journey, and we have been on this journey together to live encouraged life, to live that place where we are called to thrive, not just survive. And this week, we're focused on encouraged relationships and how important it is to be encouraged by the people around us, but to be encouraging the people around us, too. Everything in this journey really begins with encouragement. We need to be invested in encouragement in order to live these lives of thriving. You cannot thrive in your life without encouragement. So over the past few weeks, we've been talking about um, different elements of encouragement from defining encouragement to the, the fundamentals of encouragement. And if you've missed any of the episodes, you can head over to growinghoperadio.com and you can catch up on all the episodes. You'll also find links to the um, different episodes, the, the, the blog post that goes along with it. You'll find those over at snarkyrainbows.com. Now, when we invest in encouraged relationships, we can literally change the world. When you invest in others and you feed the courage to become their unique design, then you set up a domino effect that's going to, it can't help but change the world. Because when you change a life, you change the world. So we're investing in changing lives with encouragement. Now, I have shared with you before, (laughs) on many occasions, about my husband's commercial break moment in our marriage. When he stopped in the middle, uh, we were watching TV together and he stopped when the commercial started and just turned to me and said, I don't really like you anymore and I don't really like much being around you. I shared this recently at an event and my husband was there and he will tell you that he remembers it differently. And... But that's what I remember him saying, or at least that's what I heard. And I knew in that moment I had two choices. I could either uh, attack, (laughs) which I promise was a possibility, or I could take it in and listen to what he said. And I chose to listen to what he said. And I, I, nine times out of 10, I like my husband. And I wanted our marriage to not just last, but to thrive. I wanted a thriving relationship with him. I wanted a thriving marriage. So I was going to do something radically different in order to get something different. When my husband told me he didn't like me, (laughs) I, I, I did something different than I ever had before. I looked at me instead of him. I began to try to look for ways that I could be invested in improving our marriage. What could I do that was going to change things? And I found this book called How to Encourage the Man in Your Life, which is no longer in publication, but is one of the best books I have ever read. Changed my life, not just with my husband, but all the men in my life, my father-in-law, my children, who are boys, (laughs) my, my brothers, my dad. So it really did a lot to affect my journey because it it pushed me to look at things differently. And when we're willing to look at things differently, then we can make the changes necessary to drive us to that next step. And that's what happens when we're investing in encouraged lives. We, we make the changes necessary to invest in these relationships. So when I started reading this book, I became intentional about how I was investing in my husband. I began speaking positive things about my husband. I began praying in a in an encouraging and positive way. Even when he wasn't around, I was I was praying peace and comfort and boldness over his life. And when I was out around other people, 
I still spoke positive things. Even when we were struggling, even when he was struggling, I'm still speaking positive things. And it wasn't two weeks, maybe, maybe even faster, that he came to me and he said, I don't know what's changed, but something's changed. Because he noticed a difference. He noticed a difference in my attitude towards him. He noticed a difference in the atmosphere around us because I was invested in encouraging his life and feeding encouragement in my life. And that's really, that's what makes the difference. It is not, <laughs> it is not always easy to be encouraging to the people around us. It is not always easy to be encouraged. It's really not easy when there's people that are annoying you. And if you've been in a relationship for more than a day, <laughs> you've probably been annoyed more than once. When the people annoy you, it is easy to hone in on those negatives, hone in on the annoyances. And when you do, you shift out of the possibility of doing, uh, being encouraged or being an encouragement. When you are attempting to build encouragement, you have to learn to get around the annoyances. So first thing is you have to dare to see the heart. <laughs> and yes, I do know this can be a huge challenge when you're already annoyed. But it is not about what their actions are. It is not about what their actions were. It's not even about what you know they're going to do. It is about their heart and seeing their heart. The second thing is to focus on the positives. The more you list those positives, the more they become your default focus. And the more they become your default focus, the easier it is to get past the annoyances. The third thing is to praise now, to be focused on praising now. What are they doing now? And what did they do yesterday? Good or bad or ugly? Not what do you expect tomorrow, but what are they doing right now? The fourth thing is to speak those positives. We've got to be speaking the positives out loud and often. The more we speak them, the more they settle into our heart and our mind and become our reality. And finally, the fifth thing is to live encouraged. The more we live it, the more we show it, the more it, it becomes catching and spreads. We have to surround ourselves with hope in this dark world. We have to surround ourselves with hope because this world is dark this world is negative and the only true remedy for the darkness is the light and hope is the light it is the spark of light that allows you to see the possibilities so we have to be invested in that i went to an event and the lady that came in right before us looked like she had been sucking lemons all day <laughs> You know that look, right? You know immediately, not only are they not in a good mood, but they're going to make sure that you know they're not in a good mood. And I knew that she was unhappy. But I had to work. I was there waiting on tables at this event. And she happened to be at one of the tables. And I had the choice of responding to her lemon-sucking <laughs> um, focus with a similar attitude or to um, honor my income and, and, and treat her with uh, love and support. Partly because of my income, but partly because that really is my default place. I'm, I'm going to try to be entertaining, encouraging, hopeful, no matter what's going on around me. So this lady, the more I invested in encouraging her. The more I reached out, the more I smiled, the more I engaged in, in fun banter, the more she softened. And by the end of the event, I won't say she didn't look like she sucked lemons, but she had sucked fewer lemons. <laughs> so she, she had chilled out a little bit. But when I got my tip, it spoke volumes. Um, it, was, it was exceedingly abundantly what she owed me and or what she would normally have paid um, my manager said that she came to him and explained that she had been dealing with some family issues right before she came to this event and she had to come to this event before i mean while she was dealing with this she had to push all that aside and come anyway and my attitude 
had made it easier for her. So when we are faced with these people that are just sucking lemons, sometimes the smile and encouragement that we offer gets them through a rough spot that we didn't even know they were going through. So remember the first thing when we're investing in encouraging relationships is to see the heart. See, if I had focused on her lemon qualities, <laughs> it would have been a lot harder to deal with her, but she, she was just a person. I didn't know what she was going through. She was just a person. I was just going to have fun, make friends, and find ways to be relentlessly helpful. And the more I did that, the more it it soothed her heart. So I was, I was willing to expose my heart a little bit in order to touch her heart. Now, it doesn't always work, and that's okay. Because it's not about just about them. It's about you. The more you invest in that, the more it grows up in you. So when you learn to see their heart, you see past their expressions, you see past their attitudes, you see past their behaviors and what they are or are not doing. And you just see God's creation. That's, that's what it comes down to. You're seeing with God's eyes and not with man's eyes. When you see the heart, you see past the moment. And when you see past the moment, then you see so much more than the emotions. I had to meet with somebody in authority that had hurt one of my children um, with words, just with words. But still, we all know that, that words have meaning, they have power, and when they're used in a negative way from someone in authority on our children, it can be really tough to let that go. But I was trying. I was really trying. If you want to ruffle the feathers of a natural born encourager, that's the way to do it. So he made a comment that just about pushed me over the edge, except my husband was there. And my husband, who is not the natural born encourager in the family, reached over and put his hand on my knee. And his touch soothed me. It calmed me. It, it gave me, it gave me courage. He encouraged me with that simple touch. And fortunately for the gentleman sitting across from me, <laughs> my husband was there because it can be so tough not to fall into the traps that are set for us. Um, these traps of negativity, of emotional reaction and responses, of the negatives that are just everywhere, the darkness. We have to build this shield of encouragement, this, this armor of hope that's going to let us get through these moments. And sometimes it's because of the people sitting next to us holding us to the ground, <laughs> which is kind of what I felt like he was doing. But what is the best armor that we can put on in order to... Um, build these encouraged relationships and in order to live encouraged the best armor is the positives the, there's no there there's no other way to combat the negatives than with positives that's the only way to do it and we've talked about this the last several weeks encouragement is a positive that will overcome the negatives so the second thing that we have to do when we're building these encouraged relationships is we have to be invested in the positives if you've ever had the opportunity <laughs> to go to a government meeting then you understand how easy it can be to get annoyed to get frustrated to get mad and and to react in an emotional way it can be especially difficult um, when there is a personal element involved. When, you, when you've watched something happen and you see that the people in power are ignoring the truth of the reality. Pro tip, if you do have to go to one of these events, it is a good idea to take along a notepad and try to write an encouragement um, podcast <laughs> while you're listening to everything go on because at least it keeps you coming back to the positives. But 
sometimes you can't, you can be around these people and these negatives and you can think <sighs> nothing but the negatives. And when you think nothing but the negatives, you're going to end up in a hole of darkness. I'm going to make a confession that I, I rarely make, but there are days when I don't like my husband either. <laughs> now, don't tell him I said that because I like to have that whole commercial break moment um, in my back pocket for when he's annoying me because it happens. But what I have found is on those days when I don't like my husband, it is because I have been playing this constant round robin thing about the negatives um even the little things you know like the the way he drinks his soda or um the way he you know sucks the the stuff out of his teeth or you know whatever whatever it is the fact that he's watching tv while he's on his phone and he's a guy and he can't really do that <laughs> but the truth is that as long as I focus on those negatives, I'm going to be in a bad place. I'm going to be annoyed with him. But the moment I start thinking about all the positives, like the time he calmed me with his hand on my knee, or the way, the way he looks at me when he is fully enamored with me, or the way I know without a shadow of a doubt that he loves me beyond reason. Those things, when I focus on those, it's hard to be annoyed with him. I, I'm, I want to be around him. I want to go over and put my hand on his knee and comfort him. Because that's what happens when we're focused on the positives of the people around us. That love just pours out and pours over and pours around. And, and you can't do anything but think positives. Now, it doesn't change what he's doing. It doesn't change his behavior, but it changes my choice of what I see. When I see the positives, then that is the emotions that I pour out. When you choose to focus on the positives and you seek the positives, then you will be encouraged and you will be encouraging to the people around you. Not only will they feel better, but you will feel better. And, and sometimes they just feel better because you feel better. But the thing is, the more you're focused on those positives, the more they will feel that in their lives. When you are dealing with people who have lied to you or who have hurt you in the past, it can be even more challenging. It can be... <laughs> It can be a Goliath-sized obstacle. And I mean like the big bumpy pickle. <laughs> because we're VeggieTale fans in this house. But you, you see, oh, you see this nastiness and what positives can possibly come out of it. And that's what I was facing when I was in the um, government meeting. I was seeing all these people that I knew knew better but that were just saying things that there's no way they could have believed them. I mean, maybe they did. I, I hope they did. But it sure felt like they were lying to my face and expecting me to take it. So trying to find the positives in those situations can be a huge challenge. So the third thing that you have to do when you're building encouraged relationships is you have to focus on the present, the right now, this very moment. You can't think about the lies they told you yesterday. You can't think about the hurt that they did to you yesterday. You have to be focused on the here and now. This, I, I, this is a fine line and, and is something that, that it requires a little bit of discernment because when you are in, in, in a situation where someone is doing more than saying negative things, it can be a challenge. It can be an unsafe environment and and never put yourself in an unsafe environment what i'm talking about is those people that if you've if you've ever been in school <laughs> you had those people that spread the rumors and sometimes they they continue to do so outside of school uh, if you focus on what they did in school then you can't see who they are now and if they aren't doing it now 
and you're judging them by what they did in school, is, it, does that make you any better? So here we are. We are dealing with people who have hurt us in the past. And those moments will try to rear their head when we're trying to be encouraged. Two things are going to happen. If you are being an encouraged and positive person, a negative person is not going to want to stay around you. So if they've hurt you in the past, they've lied to you in the past, then your choice to be encouraged and to be positive is going to drive them away. They can't, negatives cannot stand to be around positives. They just can't do it. They either have to change and become positives or they have to run. <laughs> I prefer to make them run. Well, also, by choosing to see the now, you allow them to not be the person that they were. And this goes back to kind of seeing the heart. So you have to make the intentional choice to see now. The fourth thing that we want to do when we're building encouragement, it goes back to what I said at the very beginning and how I would talk positive things about my husband and say positive things about my husband. You can do this with anybody and in any situation. It does two things. One, it shifts your focus and your belief and two it spreads other people hear you speaking these positive things and they begin to think differently it is essential to do this about yourself as well you need to be speaking positives about who you are and what you're doing go back to the um, radical intentional series that we did in growing hope where we talked about the uh, mantra for living that the I am statements, the, the de declarations that you are your unique design. And, and the more you do it, the more you believe it. And the more you believe it, the more you live it. So we have to be invested in encouraging ourselves, but we also have to be invested in encouraging the people around us. Even if they give us that commercial break moment where they say, I don't really like you. It's not about whether or not they like us. It's not about whether or not we like them. Each and every one of us is uniquely designed on purpose and for a purpose. And who am I to decide the limitations of your purpose? I, I, it's not my job to decide that. But I can tell you, having met you or not, that you are extraordinarily unique. That you have in you the ability to be world-changing that you have in your heart seed right now something that wants to grow up into extreme possibilities that's going to push you into that place of thriving. I know this about you because that's how you were designed. Whether or not I like you doesn't change that. That's what you were created to be. And when I see that in you, then I can encourage anybody I encounter because it's in every single one of us. We were all designed with this heart seed in us and we were all designed to grow up and be this. So I can speak positives about every single person I encounter, no matter what they have done to me in the past, no matter what they might do to me in the future, and really no matter how they're acting right now. I had a neighbor stop us. Uh, we we lived in the woods for 25 years. I did my own thing. I didn't have to worry about it. Squirrels don't report me. But then we had to come live in the city. And I, I would go out and I'd walk every day. And I have a tendency to talk to myself. And I'm animated when I talk. I don't know if you've caught on to that. So I'd be out. I'd be talking. One of the neighbors stopped me. And he said, I've been to your website. And I wasn't too sure about you. I wasn't too sure that anybody could be that you know, encouraged and that hopeful. And he said, and then I saw you out walking around and then I kind of had a chance to talk to you. And it's, it's true. <laughs> you really are that odd. And I am because I live out what I believe. I, I try to do it every single day. I try to do it every single moment because if I ever allow darkness in, I have to beat it back so hard to get to that place of light. It's exhausting and I don't like to do that. I don't ever like to go to that place. I would much rather see the hope and the inspiration even from a heartbreaking moment. 
So the fifth thing that we have to do when we're building these encouraged relationships is we have to live it. We have to live what we've been talking about. We have to live encouraged. We have to live hopeful. We have to live as if we're seeing the silver lining. We have to live like we don't care who's watching us dance. You know, they say uh, dance like nobody's watching. I say dance like you don't really care who's watching. Because when you're doing your unique thing, there are going to be people who say you've lost your mind. There are going to be people who say you're crazy for doing what you're doing because they don't understand it and they're not supposed to. They're not you. But if you don't do what you're uniquely designed to, to do, there are going to be people who say negative things about you for that. So just go ahead and accept the fact that there are going to be people who say things and do things and live your uniqueness. Be uniquely you and live out this place of joy and excitement and hopefulness and encouragement. And the more you live it out, the more it is contagious. My husband recently taught a Bible study on Psalm 88. And he says that in his research, he found out that Psalm 88 is one of the saddest Psalms ever. And you know, <laughs> sad Psalms can say so much. <laughs> Anyway, he said one of his challenges to his uh, to the other people in the class was to find something positive in this saddest psalm. And afterwards, he was talking over with me, and he said, "You know why I can now um, seek out the positives in this sad psalm?" And of course, I said, "It's because of God." And he said, "Yes, it's because of God, but it's also because you've been living it day in and day out." And I've experienced it through you, and now I am beginning to live it, and 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 not just live it, but to share it, because that's what it's all about. Living this encouraged life is about spreading this encouraged life, and when we invest in encouraged relationships, then we spread it. So see the heart, focus on the positives, praise the now, speak the positives, and live encouraged. The more encouraged relationships you have in your life, the bolder you will be in pursuing your unique design. The stronger you will be able to stand when the negatives do attack. And really, in truth, the more likely you are to repel the negatives before they even show up. So be invested in these encouraged relationships. If you're still struggling to find your encouragement habit, Please join us over at the Growing Hope Twitter chat. It's every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Central, where we share, you know, uh, questions on encouragement, answers on encouragement, and then we also have daily challenges that are pushing us to be actively invested in encouragement. If you're struggling to find your unique way, reach out to me. You can find me on social media. You can find me over at katherinelang.com. Or you can just reach out through snarkyrainbows.com. It's the easiest to remember. Snarkyrainbows.com. I'm also Catherine C. Lang or the Catherine C. Lang on all the social media platforms. You can uh, direct message me through those. You have it in you right now to change the world. All it takes is a little bit of encouragement. Until next time, remember, be blessed and be a blessing. Thank you for joining us for Growing Hope with Catherine Lang, where we are sharing hope, encouragement, and inspiration to do more. Visit www.catherinelang.com to invite Catherine to be part of your event or to share your own stories of possibility living. Until next time, remember that a seed of hope planted and nurtured will grow up into a world of possibilities.